Hey everyone, Jared here, and today I'm actually just taking a look at two different models in the Ubiquiti lineup. One is called the ISO Station, and one is called the Prism Station. They're both horn based antennas, and they both um, can be used with interchangeable horns, which is really cool. You can change your, um, your uh, what, I, what I call it, your um, antenna pattern basically by putting on a different horn. This is a, a 45 degree horn, you can put a 30 degree on. Um, a 60 degree or a 90 degree. So it's kind of cool and there's no feed lines. So um, very, very interesting. You know, you've got your two cross polarized antennas coming out there. They go essentially into what is a sort of a waveguide of sorts or a reson uh, resonating chamber. And then um, it just goes bang straight into the, into the horn. So really love the design and um, quite captivated it by it and because Ubiquiti had two versions in their lineup I wanted to know what the differences were. Now this one is what's called their ISO station. This one over here is a slightly bigger guy, what's called their prism station. Now why this is such an interesting comparison is that the ISO station comes with a horn, the prism station does not. The ISO station is a third of the price, the prism station clearly is not. So you start wondering to yourself, am I better off with say three, three ISO stations or one prism station? And you know, your mind does sort of start turning a bit there and um, it's not entirely clear what the difference is in the Ubiquiti spec sheet. You have, you have a look at the two pages, they look very similar. Um, you know, they both show the different horn options. They both talk about, um, well, the prism one talks about the prism filter, but it's a lot of fluff. Doesn't tell you much about this active RF filtering. Um, you know, modular design, they all look the same. You dig into the spec sheet and they've both got, um, well, you know, the prism station uh, is typical of the um, sort of serious enterprise grade hardware, um, has a little bit extra power, that sort of thing. But by and large, the question still comes, do you buy three prism stations or one, uh, sorry, three ISO stations or one prism stations? So let's have a look at the differences. The ISO station is physically much smaller. Now, while the ISO station unit itself um, feels very well built, it feels like it's made to the same standard as the prism station, it doesn't have a GPS antenna. So you can't GPS lock these um, with the rest of your radios if that's something you want to do. Also, it doesn't come with a nice mount. You can see there, it's got a, oh, I forget what you call that, but there's a nice little um, channel, a keyway um, cut into this and you get a nice 360 degree sort of mount for it. Whereas the ISO station just comes with your typical ubiquity um, stainless steel hose clamp and you just bolt it to a pole, uh, clamp it to a pole. <clears throat> Excuse me there. Now, so that feels really well made. Don't have a problem with that as a bit of hardware. This on the other hand, the horn that it comes with um, is nothing that flash. Now, it looks cool and you can see inside it, but the first thing you notice, especially when you take it off, is this is plastic. If you've been used to using the prism station gear, you'll know that all of their horns are aluminium. So this is plastic. Um, and what they've done is they've, you know, they've got the same sort of design. They're actually exactly the same height. I'll show you that in a minute. But they've actually just sprayed or coated the plastics uh, with a coating of aluminium on the inside. You might say it's been luminized. Um, I don't really have the Australian way of saying that. Aluminiumized, it kind of sounds weird. But basically they've coated that with aluminium so that they can use a, a plastic horn. Now, the question for me is how long will that um, hold up. Um, you do, you know, when you've got the two, the, the dissimilar materials, um, you've got different levels of, um, uh, you know, uh, thermal expansion and contraction. How long will that aluminium layer stay there before it starts flaking? Is that going to last the length of your deployments? All those sort of questions come into mind. Um, that said, if you just want to play around with it, the fact that it actually comes with a horn, it gives you a radio, you can go and get into the whole horn uh, horn concept of um, antennas and radios and no feed lines and have a good play. So I do like that. Now, I'll just quickly show you the other thing before we move on to the prism station unit. 
the horns are actually pretty much identical in height. Now the first question that came to my mind is, well, they're identical in height, do they have the same sort of pattern um, on the base here? And because one's plastic, one's, I uh, think, well, it looks to be cast aluminium with a bit of machining where needed, um, you sort of wonder, are they interchangeable? And the fact of the matter is, they are. Each radio will take each horn. Um, so it's completely possible, uh, and these are available separately, to buy the prism station horn and connect it to the ISO station. So you now have a radio that's got all the mechanical benefits of a prism station at half the price. Um, so that said, now we're saying, well, do we buy two ISO stations, throw away the, the rubbishy 45 degree um, horn and go and put a real horn on it? Valid question. We still have that mounting point issue, but for some horns, you're just going to point them straight anyway. That's what you want. You're not going to bother with up and down, left and right. Maybe that's fine. So let's go on to the actual hardware. As you can see, Prism Station is a substantially bigger unit. Um, and one of the reasons for this is, well, it ha one feature it has that the ISO Station doesn't is GPS. As I've mentioned, it can be GPS locked so that you can reduce um, co-channel interference between all your um, we can reuse channels basically across your network. So there is that. Um, but it does have five, uh, three decibels more, out, more output power. So that's twice the power um, in real time, well, in, in uh, watts, uh, milliwatts in this case. Um, it, as I said, it does come with that nice angled adapter and um, it has a little bit more processing power. It's got twice the RAM, this has got one, uh, 64 mega RAM, it's got 128. Um, actually, in processing power wise, let me just check that one. Um, and this is where, you know, it does get confusing because uh, with, as with a lot of ubiquity gear, half the challenge is figuring out um, their specifications. And you can read the data sheets and still not figure it out. Okay, so let's have a quick look there. Um, yep, they've both got uh, MIPS 74K processors, so they've both got the same processing power. However, um, the Prism Station has better RF filtering. Now uh, it's got the Prism technology, the ISO Station doesn't. Um, the Prism Station has twice the memory. The ISO station doesn't. The Prism station has 3 dB more output power. The ISO station doesn't. This is 28 dBm. This is 25 dBm. Um, and so they're the kind of questions you have. Does that justify twice the price or th if you include the upgraded antenna or three times the price if you don't? That's up to you. But I definitely think in terms of hardware, um, in terms of the, the build quality, the actual ISO station unit um, is well up there. I think that would last just as long as the Prism Station unit. They're both, um, you know, lovely aluminium um, designs. The the feet, the resonating chamber cavity, I suppose, um, looks my chamber looks exactly the same. They're both beautifully bolted down. Um, I think you probably could get away with these. You could make the decision and say, well, we don't need twice the memory because we're only going to have half the number of clients on, we can afford to have two more radios. I think you could make that um, that um, decision, especially if you're not in a noisy environment. The real place where this is going to win is where you've got a lot of um, competitors, a lot of RF interference, all that sort of stuff where it's additional filtering capacity, um, which is built into um, the ASIC, one of the dedicated chips, not a software thing, really comes into play. So I hope that answers your question. Um, if you're you know, in a very non-dense environment, you can use two of these with nice antennas and you can get away with it. If you're in a very RF dense environment, such as a city, this is going to be the clear winner, easily worth double the price. Will they both hold up? Yes. Should you use this antenna? Well, I wouldn't be using it in Australia, that's for sure. Um, the Aussie Outback, zero to 40 degrees during summer. I can't imagine that that aluminium coating is going to stay on for more than a couple of years. That said, 
probably you know beyond the life of a 150 US dollar product. Anyway, I hope that helps. I hope now that people have actually seen what the difference is, they won't have to go and buy two of them like I have. Anyway, this is Jared's um, VK3BL, I'm a radio amateur, saying 73, which is buy for Rate My Radio.